Hey everyone, this is Todd the Cyber Truck Truck Guy, and today I'm going to be doing the first in a two part video series called Visualizing the Tesla Battery Ramp Up. So let's get into it. So, the first thing is to understand is that one gigawatt hour of battery production is a million kilowatt hours. That the battery sizes for the Tesla vehicles and other electric vehicles typically range somewhere between 35 kilowatt hours and 100 kilowatt hours. So let's just say, for sake of argument, the average is 100 kilowatt hours. That means you can actually, so basically you just take a million, which is one gigawatt hour, divided by 100, one vehicle, and you end up, you can make 10,000 vehicles. Because the average is actually closer to 75 kilowatt hours for Tesla vehicles, at least currently, that's why over here I have five gigawatt hours making 66,000 vehicles. That's the math. That's what this represents. So this is total gigawatt hours of batteries produced. And this is how many cars you could make from that if your average was 75 kilowatt hours per vehicle. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at where Tesla is at currently. So what you see here is they're currently producing about 35 gigawatt hours out of Giga Nevada. And in the last year, they purchased somewhere around five gigawatt hours from CATL in China. What you can see here is they produced about half a million cars. They actually produced a little over like 508,000 vehicles. And basically the rest of their battery capacity went to storage. So let's talk about 2021. What you see happening here is that we expect the battery production at Giga Nevada to gradually expand because Panasonic has added a line and they're producing more efficient batteries out of there. So we also know that based on what they're targeting for production in China, which is all going to be probably from CATL, they're going to have to be around 18 gigawatt hours. At some point, even though the Fremont line is producing, they're gradually ramping it up. That's the Cato Road facility. And so we're going to assume that they're going to be able to produce six gigawatt hours in 2021. Is notice that even if they get six gigawatt hours, that's going to put it at around 25% of Giga Nevada. And the Cato Road facility is a fraction. It's 50, you know, like a 50,000 square foot building. It's tiny, tiny, tiny compared to Giga Nevada. And so that's where we're going to begin to see this transition from the old way of doing things to the new way and how they can scale so much faster. All right, so let's look at 2022. Now we start to see the other production lines coming on and I have to start zooming out you now begin to get a sense of the impact of the new factories coming online. We'll continue to see Giga Nevada grow. CATL's production will continue to grow in China. Fremont, now I'm going to give it a maximum production capacity of 8 gigawatt hours because it's got a capacity of 10. So we're going to we're going to say it's 8 is what it's going to be able to produce at. And then Giga Austin and Giga Berlin are going to be coming online. And the other one that I didn't mention in my last video about this was the LG, LG Chem. It's hard to keep track of all these moving pieces, but LG Chem announced right on the heels of Tesla announcing their the form factor on battery day, the new 4680 cell. Executive Vice President of LG Chem said the following, we are currently developing cylindrical batteries that have five times more energy density and six times more output than current batteries. That is exactly the terminology that Elon Musk used to talk about the 4680. And so people are speculating that what Tesla is going to be doing instead of actually building a factory in China uh, themselves is they're going to be partnering with LG Chem to produce the new 4680 cells and then partnering with CATL as they continue to do for building other cells. Remember that Elon has not said everyone needs to switch over to 4680, but the fact that LG Chem 
announced this right on the heels of Tesla Battery Day. It just all seems very coincidental. Originally, I thought they were going to actually build their own assembly line in China, and maybe they will. But this seems to indicate that initially, they're going to be partnering with LG Chem to produce the 4680 for the Giga Shanghai produced cars that are going to be using the 4680. That's why I have this up here instead of adding a separate line in Giga Shanghai. In the conference call, Elon referenced that they thought they would be adding a total of about 100 gigawatt hours of production by the end of 2022. And then he referred to reaching 30% capacity out of their new cell production lines. So piecing that together is where we end up getting 30 at each of the new factories plus incremental growth from all the other sources. You start to get some sense of how remarkable this is. So you are going from 55 or so gigawatt hours of capacity up to 145, 150 gigawatt hours of capacity in a single year. And what that does, if you were just building vehicles, you'd be going from about 750,000 in 2021 to almost 2 million vehicle capacity in 2022. So now let's look at uh, 2023. All right, let's start zooming out. Again, this is just now we're getting to full ramp at Giga Austin and Giga Berlin. We're now starting to ramp the LG Chem line. And I'm predicting that the LG Chem ramp will go slower because they didn't design the equipment. Tesla did. And so I'm expecting Tesla to have the fastest capacity to ramp production. Now, who knows, right? but you can begin to see the impact. So we go the, at, before I zoomed out, the, the gap here seemed massive, but now you begin to get a sense of just how truly remarkable just two years going from 2021 to 2023 will have. You're talking about a total of 310 gigawatt hours here and the ability to make and produce about 4.1 million vehicles, a jump of almost 2 million vehicle capacity going from, and I know you can't see this probably in the video that it's as we zoom in ever more, but you're talking about massive gains in production. And none of this is, all of this is actually it sits inside of the context of what's been revealed at a combination of battery, battery day and what's come out from other sources. This, the scale of what they're going to be doing here is insane. All right, now lastly, let's look at 2024. Okay, I can't, oh, I can't really fit this all on one, uh, one page or it zooms out so much you can't even see anything. But what you see here is we've got a total of almost 500 gigawatt hours. So again, in just one year, another 200 gigawatt hours of production is coming online for Tesla. And that is a combination of, you'll see down here, there's a big jump at Giga Nevada. Now I'm expecting that Tesla is gonna to wanna to incorporate a 4680 line either at Giga Nevada, or they also might put it at Fremont. But I'm putting it at Giga Nevada right here because Giga Nevada has a more robust factory for converting cells into battery packs. Do I know that? No. Do I know that's what's going to happen? No. I'm just saying that's we're, we're putting it there. But I'm saying they're adding another line there and then they're going to add another line to each of the Austin and Berlin facilities. So in other words, they're adding one production line or however many lines, 100 gigawatt hours is at each one of these. And I think in the second year, they're going to begin phase two and add more production. You're talking about a total 
vehicle capacity if all they're doing let's see here is i gotta zoom in some i can't even read it six million six hundred thousand vehicles is what they're going to have the capacity to do i don't think there's any way on god's green earth they're going to be actually producing 6.6 .6 million vehicles but again on a relative basis you're talking about a 12x it growing by 12x in five years okay that's it for the capacity side but in the next video we're actually going to be taking all this capacity and breaking it up into chunks between both what we know for sure tesla is going to be producing like the Cybertruck, and what they've also referred to like how this will affect energy storage how it will affect like the Model 2, the economy car. And that's where it gets really interesting. So if that sounds interesting, you're going to want to catch my next video. And otherwise, like, subscribe, comment, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.